Valentine's Day reminds us of good friends and family. Here's how to say Happy Valentine's Day. Hi, Plug It's In here. The electric connection just in time for Valentine's Day. Get this 10 cubic foot refrigerator freezer just $4.99. The 17 cubic foot frost free just $8.49. Or the deluxe model only $9.89. With this GE 18 pound washer and easy clean range, both only $5.49. And we service them all right here at the electric connection. The only authorized GE dealer. Show your loved ones you really care this holiday. Happy Valentine's Day. Education in the Virgin Islands is not always taken seriously by our children when they are young and in school. Our dropout rate proves this, but in their wiser years they need some place to turn to. Thank God for the Adult Basic and Continuing Education Program. Adult Education offers courses and programs that prepare people to be something in life. Our writing, science, reading, math, and social studies courses ready young adults to pass a high school equivalency exam. This is Channel 10, St. Thomas. Good evening, I'm Paige Stahl. The chairman of the Congressional Energy and Natural Resources Committee, Idaho Senator James McClure, has asked for a study of the United States territorial policy. So teams of evaluators have made their ways through the Caribbean and the Pacific over the past year. The research in the Virgin Islands is just about through as Channel 10's Bet Janet Bigham explains. Major events have prompted Congress to study the federal territories. The trust territories of the Pacific are about to change status, and the Caribbean Basin Initiative has put the spotlight on this part of the world. Fact-finding teams have some objectives in mind, like tracing the history of changes in federal policies in the territories, and looking at the federal government's organization when dealing with them. We've been asked to look at how federal laws and federal grant programs are applied to the territories and whether stateside standards, in other words, if a law is designed to fit Massachusetts and then it's extended to the territories, is that a problem for the territories? And how does the territory relate with the federal government to fix that problem? Um, this is for both domestic laws and foreign, uh, foreign policy. In the Virgin Islands, the team of Chris Brennan and Glenn Levis interviewed members of legislature, government house, and the Chamber of Commerce. They claim there is a feeling here that islanders are not treated the way Americans ought to be. I feel that um, more needs to be done. I mean, there, more attention needs to be focused. Yeah. More people in Washington need to be aware of the problems, the unique problems of the Virgin Islands. The Virgin Islands is in the Caribbean. It's not. It's not attached to the mainland, and there has to be a recognition of that when policies are being formulated, when federal programs are being extended to the territories, and that it's very easy to forget that the Virgin Islands has unique needs, not only because it's in the Caribbean, but because it's a territory. When the research and interviews are done, the information will be added to all the other findings throughout the territories. The report that comes out of all this will make its way to Congress, along with some suggestions by the evaluators. Uh, everybody we've talked to down here has been extremely helpful and receptive and very anxious to talk and that's been very helpful to us and we think their answers have been frank and open and that's going to help us I think prepare a report that that really reflects what the people that we've talked to feel and that, that's got to help us and will help Congress the team has one week left in the islands before returning to Washington DC I'm Janet Bigham reporting for News Center 10 in other news this evening, the Green K Resort proposal went before the Virgin Islands Planning Board last night in public hearings, with many favoring the proposal and several persons opposing it. Those against were as concerned with government failures as with the specifics of the project itself. A firm called ProInvest wants to build a large resort community on St. Thomas just off of Green K on the south side of the island. The complex would cluster 550 hotel rooms on a 200-acre site, where 82 acres of the waterfront the company wants to rezone from low-density residential to waterfront before a March 1st land purchase deadline. Adjacent would be some 150 townhouses. At the meeting last night, the St. Thomas St. John Chamber of Commerce strongly supported the proposal, saying it's well-designed and would help the territorial economy. In in summary, we believe that the Green Key Resort will make a significant contribution to the economy of to the economy of our community 
and will be in harmony with the environment and aesthetic features of the island. Tourism director Leona Bryan strongly favored the project. You want a, an airport strip that would accommodate wide-body jets. When these wide-body jets come in, do you have enough hotel rooms to accommodate the people who will be coming? For the immediate and the foreseeable future, tourism is the bedrock of our industry. And when we look at the competition around us, we are the only island practically in the Caribbean that is not constructing new hotel properties. Commissioner of Conservation and Cultural Affairs, Angel Lebron, who is the zoning administrator of coastal areas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, said his staff has recommended the hotel project. In the greatest effort for promotion of economic development, which is deemed in the coastal zone area as a primary responsibility, that we should go ahead and consider this particular uh, development. But there were several opposed to Green K. Roy Watlington is the executive vice president of the BI Conservation Society. If everyone agrees that foul sewage smells, traffic jams, views of trash and garbage, and dead marine environments are not assets but liabilities, then why would we even consider intensifying these problems by further burdening the infrastructure? The obvious breakdown of the system is evident all over the island. And it is not only turning off the tourists, but having negative, negative effects on the residents as well. The League of Women Voters also said that it cannot favor Green Cay. The impact of this zone change on the island cannot be considered minor and should be thoroughly evaluated by the decision makers. Further, projects of this magnitude are significant reasons for the immediate development and implementation of a comprehensive land use plan for the Virgin Islands. Paul Hoffman, a lawyer in the Virgin Islands who represents ProInvest, which proposes to build a Green Cay Resort, gave a summary statement refuting the critics. I do not believe that the people in the Virgin Islands who are looking for improvement in public services in roads at WAPA in the school system are prepared to indulge the League of Women Voters or any of those persons in the community who feel there should be a moratorium on development. I do not believe that the persons who are seeking to have their salaries increased, their government benefits provided on a timely fashion, are prepared to accept a moratorium. The BI Planning Board will make its recommendations to the legislature, which must then decide on the zoning request. USA Today, America's most comprehensive sports coverage, plus money, life, and the nation. USA Today brings you the Available in St. Thomas, January 23rd. I know how you feel about Wheatsworth crackers. That great Wheatsworth taste is written all over your face. Think light and crackling crisp. Imagine a touch of honey and sesame. Can't you just taste it? That great Wheatsworth taste. How great does a Wheatsworth taste? Ask Adam. It's written all over your face. Unionized food and beverage employees of the Ott Haven Hotel who were relieved of their jobs last November when the hotel decided to contract out its dining services are still waiting to be reinstated and given their back wages as had been stipulated in the district court order. No date has yet been set according to the workers for the court to hear charges filed by the Seafarers International Union on behalf of the employees alleging contempt of the original back to work order and the payment of their back wages. The employees said only about 10 of the original 42 employees fired have been taken back by the hotel. Since then, they have been out of work and some have been collecting unemployment. The hotel was ordered to reinstate them when the contempt charges came after the hotel was ordered to reinstate them with back pay, but it did not do so. 
Virgin Islands Senate President Hugo Dennis said today that the executive branch must make the next move in funding, the, or securing that is, the funding for the negotiated unionized government employees' salary increases. The legislature on Monday of this week approved a measure authorizing the governor to borrow some $17 million from any bank or financial institution to meet the negotiated salary increases of the government workers in 12 departments. Dennis said several financial institutions have expressed interest in lending the government the money. And he said the next move is now up to the executive. The legislature has fulfilled its obligations in identifying a funding source, Dennis said. Governor Juan Luis had originally proposed a measure to the legislature asking for the authorization to borrow the needed money from the government employee's retirement system. That proposal was defeated. And instead, the Democratic majority's proposal directing the governor to commercial lending institutions was adopted. Boy, I don't even want to think about weekend weather. We have a cold <laughs> front you told us about yesterday, and it's still here. It's still here, and it's going to bring us a little bit of wetness for the weekend. But we're not the only ones who are going to have a wet weekend. When we come back, we'll talk about stateside showers and local showers. The Jones family has been making pork sausage on a farm in Wisconsin for 150 years. Great sausage by Jones. The Jones boys never heard of artificial preservatives, so they naturally didn't use them. Great sausage by Jones. What they did use was good, lean pork and a smidgen of seasoning. Great sausage by Jones. Our only newfangled thing is our minute breakfast links, pre-cooked so you can save time and still savor the sausage. Great sausage by Jones. Clouds and rain everywhere this Saturday. Clouds and rain will prevail along the Pacific Northwest coast from uh, Los Angeles to Seattle and from southern New England to the mid-Atlantic coast states. More showers and a few thunder showers will be from Iowa to the Gulf Coast states and up through the Ohio Valley. Light snow is possible from Wyoming to Montana. It seems like it's going to be wet and cloudy everywhere. And in the Virgin Islands, that weak cold front that, has, that is responsible for the general cloudiness and a lot of shower activity, mainly in Puerto Rico, has has become almost stationary and is still with us. They have affected Puerto Rico much more than the Virgin Islands, but the showers and the cloudiness will increase more so tonight. Although that cold front is expected to move slowly eastward, we don't expect to have much change in our weather conditions right now through the uh, Saturday night. Puerto Rico tomorrow will have a 70% chance of shower, and that's a lot of chance, 72, 80% chance of showers. However, the one thing that we should be really careful about is the sea swells are continuing to rise because of that cold front. The swells are now up 7 to 10 feet, so there is a small craft advisory in effect. If you're going out sailing, do be careful. Now let's take a look at the temperatures around the Virgin Islands area and see what good weather we had today. In St. Thomas, the high today was 84 with a low of 70. St. John and East End's high was 85 with a low of 73. St. Croix had a high of 84 with a low of 66. And St. Croix's high was, I mean, San Juan's high was 78 with a low of 71. Not much difference in those temperatures. The barometric pressure for St. Thomas, 30.03. For St. Croix, 30.02. For St. John on East End, 30.06. The relative humidity for St. Thomas was 56%, St. Croix 52%, and St. John 62%. Precipitation recorded at the St. Thomas Airport was three one-hundredths of an inch and just a trace on St. Croix and five one-hundredths of an inch on St. John. The sunrise tomorrow will be at 654, sunset will be at 623. The winds are northeasterly, 10 to 15 knots with occasional higher gusts, especially in the vicinity of showers. The waves are near three feet and the swells are seven to 10 feet and that is throughout the Eastern Caribbean and from Hispaniola all the way over to the Northern Leeward. There is a small craft advisory in effect and it probably will remain in effect throughout most of Saturday and part of Sunday as the sea swells are rising in front of the cold front and behind the cold front. Showers, showers, we're having showers, they're having showers and cloudy skies over Guadalupe and Barbados and Trinidad and throughout the Eastern Caribbean. They're having temperatures in the mid 80s, but lots of scattered showers. And as I told you, there's a 70% chance of showers for Hispaniola, Puerto Rico. We're ha we have a 60% chance of showers. 75 is the high that is expected throughout the Bahamas, and they're having fair skies. It's just a little bit of cloud and mostly sun, they say. 
Cuba is going to have a high tomorrow of 75, and they're under fair skies. Partly cloudy, but mostly sunny skies for Jamaica. And all these are official temperatures from the wire service. <laughs> we are not, regardless of the letters, we are not elevating our temperatures above Puerto Rico's. On the mainland today, as I told you, we're having lots of showers, and they will continue through Saturday. Hailstones the size of golf balls down in Louisiana and uh, parts of uh, Alabama. They had thunder showers there in Georgia and northern Florida. And another cold front bringing bad weather to the New England states, although a high-pressure system is dominating, keeping the temperatures a little bit warmer than they have been. Temperatures will again drop down to the teens tonight, and they're having lots more showers at the mid-Atlantic coast. They snow showers again in North Dakota. Rain showers again in Seattle and uh, Seattle, Washington, and Oregon, and lots of cloudy skies on the west coast as another cold front moves through the western part of the U.S. Temperatures are only reaching the 60s in New Mexico. And on the mainland today, the, the low was 23 below in Montpelier, Vermont, on only 80 above in McAllen, Texas. They are ready for winter. Getting close to home, it will be a wet weekend. Lots of clouds, but you can make it wonderful if you want to. I'm Toya Andrew with weather from New Center 10. At First Pennsylvania Bank, we know we're only as good as our staff and our services. So we make First Pennsylvania Bank an easy to understand and offer services of proven value. We want to be the best bank you've ever had. Our after-hour windows, ample parking facilities, and special senior citizens advisors are some of our ideas for you. Remember, First Pennsylvania Bank has been serving you in the Virgin Islands since 1905. Normal L. Johansson of the island of St. Croix has been nominated by the governor to be the next commissioner of social welfare in the territory, and he replaces retiring commissioner Gwendolyn Blake. Johansson is currently the assistant director of administrative services in the St. Croix social welfare office. The 40-year-old Johansson attended Catholic University in Puerto Rico and earned a master's in social work at Adelphi University in New York. He joined the Department of Social Welfare in 1968. The Virgin Islands are surrounded by water, but unfortunately, many in our territory don't know the basics about sound water safety. A group of civilian volunteers has been formed to patrol our waters, to assist boaters, and to help in search and rescue operations. Michelle Scott has more. Ships, large and small, frequent Virgin Islands waters with water sport activities drawing a lot of people to the sea. As lovely as our waters are, as protected as our anchorages may be, as gorgeous as our weather remains, boating is dangerous unless you know just what you are doing. Playing an increasing role in the development of the safety of our waters is the Coast Guard Auxiliary. I like to uh, be sure that people are aware of good boating safety and to uh, keep them informed of what's going on to create good boating safety. The Auxiliary is a civilian operation that helps the Coast Guard perform its duties. Unlike the Guard, this volunteer group cannot enforce the law but it can assist boats in helping search and rescue missions. According to Operations Officer Klaus Willems, most emergencies could have been avoided through basic education in water safety, which the auxiliary provides free of charge. We teach about navigation, safety, uh, safe boat handling, and uh, we feel if the public is well acquainted with safe boating, we have to go out less and pull them off the rocks or <laughs> assist them on the water if necessary. Persons interested in the class should contact the Coast Guard. Classes will meet once a week for the next two months. Michelle Scott reporting, News Center 10. In regional news this evening, a state of alert declared several days ago on the Haitian border because of reports of disturbances with its neighboring country has been lifted. Military sources now say that everything has been returned to normal, although troop reinforcements at several checkpoints have been kept in force because of elections this week in Haiti. Additional troops had been sent to patrol the 220-mile-long border between the Dominican Republic and Haiti that share the island of Hispaniola. When rumors of violence in Haiti had reached Santa Domingo. Those rumors turned out to be unfounded. The border between the two countries has been closed since 1968. Another 
day in the Olympics today, Alan. I tell you, the Soviet Union, of course, Yuri Andropov died the other day, but it doesn't seem to bother the Olympic, <laughs> Soviet Union Olympic team. They had a great day at the Olympics in Sarajevo, Yugoslavia today. The United States, hey, they got a little bit closer today. A guy came in fourth place, but of course, they don't give out medals for fourth place. What's the U.S. going to do? We'll tell you more about the Olympics, and we'll have a report on the Philadelphia 76ers right after this timeout. wide and wonderful world of the Heineken men. A world of excitement, good living, and class. This is their beer, Heineken beer, known and appreciated around the world for its quality and great taste. Come on into the wonderful world, the wonderful world of the Heineken men. Be a Heineken man, join the Heineken men of the world. USA Today, America's most comprehensive sports coverage, plus money, life, and the nation. USA Today brings you the Available in St. Thomas, January 23rd. Good evening. One of the problems the Indiana Pacers have been having this season is winning down the stretch. Last night, however, that wasn't a problem as the Pacers halted their four-game losing streak with a 107-102 victory over Seattle. Clark Kellogg led the Pacers in scoring with 24 points. He also grabbed 15 rebounds. Al Wood of Seattle at all scorers with 26. In the only other NBA game last night, Phoenix defeated Atlanta 118-105. Walter Davis fired in 27 points off the bench for the Suns. Dominique Wilkins of Atlanta had 20. Well, the toughest thing to do in the NBA these days is repeat as champion. No team has done it since the Boston Celtics back in 1969. The way the Philadelphia 76ers breezed through the league last year, people were talking about dynasty. But so far this season, things have not gone according to plan for Philadelphia. They call Philadelphia the city of brotherly love. They also say the fans of Philadelphia are so mean they'd boo Santa Claus. For the Philadelphia Eagles football team, the get-out-of-town signs were applauded before the season's 5-11 and record. By the way, the Eagles play their worst football at home. It, it's that love-hate relationship which makes Philly a tough sports town. Currently, last year's darlings, the Philadelphia 76ers, are struggling by Spectrum fan standards. Forget the fact that their 31-17 and 17 record is third best in the league behind Boston and Los Angeles. After two unsuccessful tries, the Sixers finally won the NBA championship last season, going 12-1 and in the playoffs. It was a fitting payoff to the game's most respected superstar, Julius Irving. But the key that unlocked the championship door was Moses Malone. His fierce tenacity under the board simply wore opponents down. Headlining virtually the same cast as last season, the 1983-84 Sixers have tampered with the script a bit. Earlier this season, Irving, normally a go-with-the-flow personality, lashed out that the team was playing with too much confidence, but getting that hustle, not reputation, wins games. And then there's the biggest knife in the back of all. Philadelphia trails Boston by six and a half games for the Atlantic Division title. There's no better matchup in the league than a Philly-Boston contest. Philadelphia's glowing problem this year has existed on offense. The Sixers rank 16th in the league in scoring, a far cry from their seventh place finish a year ago. When the Sixers score under the century mark, they generally lose. That's happened 12 out of 15 times this season. A 111-73 loss on January 9th to New York was the lowest single-game point total for any Sixers team since 1964. The Sixers have been without the services of Moses Malone since January 24th. The three-time NBA Most Valuable Player has an injured ankle. Add to that the periodic injuries to starters Andrew Toney and Mike Ivoroni, backup forward Clement Johnson and rookie Leo Raltons, and one can see that head coach Billy Cunningham has had problems. With only eight players in uniform, the 76ers lost consecutive games to Atlanta last Friday and Saturday nights. It's doubtful that Philadelphia will catch Boston in the Atlantic Division race. The Sixers, however, will be in the playoff pitcher. But until that time, the fans will continue to be unimpressed. The Soviet Union captured the spotlight today at the 14th Winter Olympic Games in Sarajevo, Yugoslavia. Soviet gold medals went to cross-country expert Nikolai Zimatov and speed skater Sergei Bakachev. Zimatov blitzed to victory in the men's 30-kilometer race, one hour, 28 minutes, and 56.3 seconds, nearly a half minute better than compatriot Alexander Zabalov. American Bill Koch finished 21st in the race. 
Pocketchef glided home with the gold medals in the men's 500-meter speed skating race in 38.19 seconds. Wisconsin's Dan Jensen came in fourth, the best American finish so far at the Games. East Germany's Krista Rothenberger captured the women's 500-meter speed skating event. Bonnie Blair of Illinois was eighth in the 500. Ice dancers Jane Torville and Christopher Dean made history today. The British couple recorded three perfect scores from a nine-judge panel during the compulsory dance. Up until today, no couple had ever notched even one perfect score in international competition. On the Olympic Mountains today, the men's downhill was once again canceled because of snow. That has been turned in now that we'll do that again on Sunday, that is. And the women's downhill has been moved from tomorrow to Monday. Well, I love the Winter Olympics because it looks like a whole bunch of fun is happening there, just things that you'd love to try. It's sort of like a giant winter amusement park. One of the great things I like about it is the bobsledding event. But, of course, we all know that a tremendous amount of preparation goes into participating in the Olympics. The one race in the Olympics that can finish before it starts is the bobsled. It's the first two steps at the very top of the race that can shave hundredths of a second off a 1,300-meter run. Those can make the difference between coming in first or last. The sport is emerging at this Olympics as a combination of high technology and supreme human performance. The sleds have names like the cigar or torpedo, and they are treated with care. The bodies are sleek and narrow, shaped like teardrops, and made of specially designed materials to withstand 70-mile-per-hour crashes. They undergo the same kind of tests as jet aircraft, created with the aid of computers and tested in wind tunnels. The Soviets boast the narrowest sled, while the East Germans' new knife edge produced the fastest time trial today and in the season's championship races. But winning the sport does not just depend on technology. East Bloc countries now use field athletes, 100-meter sprinters, and 8,000-point decathletes. Hurdlers and pole vaulters make the best starters with their great pushing and throwing power to get the sled off the blocks. And moving a 500-pound sled from a dead stop isn't easy. Hal Hoy, one of the top U.S. bobsledders, taught me the special rocky movements and push-off to gain the winning momentum in the first few steps. And on the forward momentum, all the way to the front, I would count one. Rock it back. One more time is two. Rock it back. One more time is three. And when you come to the back point, you're going to hit it. Jump up. There's also an art to jumping into the sled without injuring the driver in the process. Okay, that was that was good, but there was no driver there, y'all. Uh, <laughs> yes. You would have uh, definitely caused some problems with him embedding the spikes right into his back. Driving the sled is more daring than any race on dry land, and when the team members invited me to try a run, I turned them down. I said I'd practice, but I'm leaving the real competition to the sledders. Dr. Bob Arnott, CBS News, Sarajevo. And guess where Billy Sims will be playing football next season? Yes, it'll be with his old team, the Detroit Lions. So says a federal judge in Detroit. That ruling comes a week after final arguments in a lawsuit filed by Sims against the Houston Gamblers of the USFL. Sims had claimed that he'd been misrepresented, misrepresented, that is, during negotiations with the Lions. That prompted him to sign with the Gamblers. Sims' agent, Jerry Argovitz, is a part owner of the USFL team. Of course, it doesn't make any difference what happened in that court deal because Billy Sims had a million dollar contract with both clubs. Congratulations to Billy Sims, you got what you wanted. And that's Sports on News Center 10, I'm Alan Lake. I want one. Introducing the sporting new Nissan Pulsar NX, a whole new look in Hemi Head Road muscle. I want one. Five-speed stick hitch to front-wheel drive. Power rack and pinion steering, all standard. I really want one. The Nissan Pulsar NX cost half as much as it looks. I got one. you want one. Betcha. Some of the best musical talent among the island's high school students will be appearing before the public soon. The musicians will be appearing to raise money for a worthy cause, scholarships. Michelle Scott has details. 175 student musicians from all five St. Thomas High Schools will be competing against each other in Musical Melee 84 next weekend. 10X, ranging from a musical comedy to a steel band ensemble, will be in the gala show. New Center 10 had an opportunity to preview two of the acts today. These are mostly the older, more experienced singers. On the musical melee, we have eight minutes, so we're going to try to show the versatility of the group. They're going to start with a Francis Poulenc motet, which is a very difficult technical classical piece. And then we think it's suitable to do something of Mr. Lamada, since the scholarships in his name, so we're doing the prayer, a very beautiful piece of his for choir. And then we're ending with a, a disco piece, Fame. According 
to Cahill, proceeds from the show will benefit the Bill Amata Music Scholarships, which were established in 1981 by the St. Thomas St. John Chamber of Commerce. Also participating in the musical melee will be the St. Peter's and Paul Jaguar Steel Band Ensemble. So this group was chosen because this is a small group that has played together for about the past two or three years. So they're actually only a small part of a larger band, but they have the expertise. They performed last year at Windward Passage and various other events around the island. Musical Melee 1984 is being sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce. The event is to be held at the Reichold Center of the Arts on February 18th at 7.30 p.m. Michelle Scott reporting, News Center 10. There'll be another free cheese, butter, and flour distribution for needy cedar sen senior citizens and food stamp recipients this Saturday on St. Thomas. Seniors will receive free five pound lots of commodities at the Jefferson Annex, and food stamp recipients will get theirs at the Charlotte Amalia High School cafeteria. Both those begin from 8.30 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. On St. Croix, the Central High School will distribute from 8.30 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon, and at the Alexander Henderson School between 2.30 and 5 in the afternoon. St. John distribution will take place next weekend. All persons there are asked to provide their own containers. That's New Center 10 for this evening. For Alan Lee, Toy Andrew, and all of us here at Channel 10, I'm Dave. Stall. Have a pleasant weekend and good night.